Bickley and Marotta. Bickley and Marotta mornings. Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. Bickley Blast. Welcome, Valley fans, to a rare and wonderful two-foam-finger day in Arizona, where the Suns are now number one in the Western Conference and where the Cardinals are alone in first place in the NFC West. Now, the Suns are not a surprise. Now that they've got their vibe right, they are clearly a title contender in the association. The Cardinals, they're another story. They are either serious overachievers or a team about to expand and grow into something special to wit they are currently a top five nfl team in the category of exceeding expectations and that is because they are one of five teams that have already won 70 percent of their projected preseason win total they've beaten the rams chargers 49ers and dolphins when those opponents had healthy quarterbacks they've got their own potential coach of the year they've got a quarterback who could conceivably make an mvp push in the final eight games and they have got a 31-year-old defensive coordinator who might be the unsung hero of the entire group. And that is because Nick Rollis's underfunded defense is fiercely competitive and extremely violent. And because Rollis refused to miss Sunday's win over the Bears, even though his wife had just given birth, even though Rollis had to practice his defensive play calls in their hospital room. The bottom line, the commitment of this team and this coaching staff to stay laser focused and unmoved by temporary triumphs is about as good as I've ever spe ever seen, especially from the youngest group of coaches you are going to find. All right, today's Bickley Blast brought to you by my great friends at Chapman BMW who make luxury attainable. Find them online at chapmanbmw.com. Good football team coming in here. I really don't think uh, your record is your record, but uh, they're, they're a good football team. Very talented, well coached. Um, all three phases got impact players, uh, defensively impact players, all three levels. Offensively, really good back. Uh, obviously, the quarterback. Uh, is still doing his thing and and some really good skill guys so big time challenge it's jonathan gannon taking a look at the uh, jets and what they <clears> present <throat> on sunday in this week 10 matchup um interesting to me Vinny, that jonathan gannon does not believe in momentum perhaps <laughs> he said it definitively uh, definitively after last game doesn't believe in momentum but but he he also doesn't believe a team's record is your record you know, that's an old that's an old famous saying in the NFL. Your record is your record. You are what your record says you are. He's clearly trying to m make sure his team doesn't look at the Jets and go, okay, that's an E, that's a W. Yeah. But I don't think this team is kind of built like that anyways. But he also doesn't like candy and spiking his insulin. We know that. We that right. <laughs> it's not winning behavior, Vinny. Right? I disagree. It's fourth cup of coffee I'm about to have. Not winning behavior. <laughs> Wolf would disagree good, with that, yeah, too. That's a good point. Um, it's weird. The history of this, this you can't even call it a rivalry. You know how many times the Jets and Cardinals have played ever? I don't. Ten. That's not a lot. The Jets came into the league right around, you know, right around 1970. Mm -hmm. um, and the Cardinals have dominated the last two matchups, 28-3 on a Monday night game in, in 2016, and then... Uh, beat the Jets in the COVID year, thirty to ten. But mm -hmm. we we went over some of those matchups, so it's 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 strange that these two teams that have been around as long as they have only meet that often. Mm -hmm. First of all, um, but you know the 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 challenge is real. I, I I don't agree. We've had this momentum talk, and based on what Jonathan Gannon believes or doesn't believe mm -hmm. in, in momentum, and I think we were both of the the mindset. That within a game, momentum, we feel it certainly exists. Oh, of exists. course it exists. But, you know, extrapolating that now to where the Cardinals are and what they've done over the last three weeks, I see a team with momentum from week to week. because And it all ties into that belief in winning behavior. When you can lean Without on that behavior, a doubt. it leads to success. It's producing results now. Yes, the winning behavior is producing wins which can be spun into momentum yeah when, when you're i totally agree with you games. totally agree with you um when you talk about the top five teams that are overachieving in the nfl uh the washington commanders going in vegas had them at six and a half wins if you place that bet on the commanders on the over you've already cashed that bet 
because they're already at seven. And if you have cashed that bet, put it into the ASU NIL. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> That's right. I got my examples. That's fantastic. I got my examples. That's really up. good. Minnesota Vikings, they were at 6.5. They're 6 and 2. One more win. They're they're you if you're a Viking fan, you cash that bet. Same with the Broncos. They were predicted 5 and a half. They're at 5 and 4. I don't know how. Steelers were at 8.0 for Vegas. They're 6 and 2. Cardinals 7, 6 and a half wherever you were at with them. They're at 5 wins obviously. Those are your top 5 overachievers in football this year. Relative to Vegas odds. How do you not put the Steelers at nine or eight and a half? Knowing their history. Knowing that That's Tomlin has point. never, ever had a losing record. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. That's a really, really good point. Then you look at some other metrics, courtesy of Mike Sando in The Athletic, and this is something that's very interesting to me. Both the offense and the defense are top ten in the league in improvement from last year to this year. And that makes sense with the offense. But the defense, even with the additions, they've had a ton of injuries, and yet their numbers are better. They're eighth in the NFL in terms of improvements over last year. I'm sorry, 10th for the defense, eighth for the offense. But still, if you'd have said top 10 improvement from last year on the defense with all those injuries they suffered early on, you'd say, okay, they're doing something good. I went back to to last year, and I I often wonder about things like this because, you know, we have talked about the Cardinals being in first place in the NFC West. If the season were to end today, they'd be in the playoffs. They'd mm-hmm. have a home playoff game. And what does it look like historically? And it, it's it's very exhaustive research. So I just went back to last year to right. see what the, what the playoff landscape looked like through nine weeks. Now, through nine weeks last year, the Cardinals were one and eight. We were very much waving the pom-poms saying, hey, good job. Play hard, guys. Yeah. Because there was nothing else really to do. That's right. So <laughs> nothing a, else to do. A four-game you know, improvement in wins over the first nine weeks, but for the most part, a lot of the teams that were in the playoff picture in week ten, going into week ten last year, mm-hmm. were around. Um, now there were three teams uh, in the NFC specifically. The NFC picture changed a lot. Mm-hmm. Tampa Bay was three and five going into week ten. They ended up winning the South. Mm-hmm. The Rams were three and six going into week ten. They made a playoff spot. And the Green Bay Packers were three and five. And that took an enormous turnaround from Jordan Love and a great second half to propel them into the playoffs. But by and large, most of the teams that were in position in week nine right. held on and made the playoffs. Oh. Which again, it might be a one year example. It might be an anomaly. Mm-hmm. But if the Cardinals continue to do the things that they're doing and avoid major injury, they're going to be in this thing. You, If they win this game, um, I, I think they're in. And I, I'm not going to declare them in. I think they've got a path. I think they're going to get in. That's what I want to say. If they win this game, I think they're going to get into the playoffs. I just think the math works for them and the quality of teams and the strength of schedule or lack thereof. Here's the other thing about the New York Jets that I think that I think Jonathan Gannon's pointing to. Jets rank second in the NFL in offensive improvement from last year to this year. Second, just behind the Washington Commanders. But they are dreadful in turning drives into points. Since 2000, of 798 football teams since 2000, Jenks, Jets rank 506th in drive scoring rate. And this is where the Cardinals are really good. Bending but not breaking, that whole theory. They rank in the 500s out of 798? Out of 798 in drive scoring rate, only 31%. So they're moving the ball within the 20s. That's it. That's what they're doing. Yeah. They're, so they're they're racking up some yards and they're moving the ball somewhat efficiently, but they just they break down. Which and, is yeah. exactly why... I keep putting poking holes into statistics and the way they're presented in the NFL. Uh huh. When they say they're the number one rated offense in the league, yeah, and it's based on total yards. That does not tell the picture of no. how good your offense is. Of course, is. it doesn't. Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.